This special broadcast of AEAC was made possible by Optison Sport Optics, RTI Arms, Diana, Daystate, FX Air Guns, Brocock, Air Arms, HN Sport, Myrow Sport, and JSB Match Diablo. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Is he ready? Yeah, he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> to be a Schmidt International Sales Manager for Diana. Yes. Yes? Yes. And we're going to cover two new guns today. The Trail Scout and the Airbug, both of which will be available in the United States. Uh, we think, uh, so the Trail Scout maybe in May and the Airbug should be the same level about. So. Okay. But before we get to that, I want you guys to know Diana the way I know Diana. And this company is so much bigger than I think a lot of people realize. So if you could, Tobias, maybe help, because what I'm getting at is there's there, there's a lot of firearm DNA yeah, right. in, the, in, the, in the top tiers of your organization. So can you just maybe take them through at home, what that looks like from the top down and who you're affiliated with? Sure. You know, in the past, uh, Diana was originally located in Rastatt in the south of Germany. And a couple of years ago, they were took over by GSG, German Sport Guns, uh, which is a company that's existing now for about 15 years. And um, was really specialized in 22 rimfire pistols and rifles. And they took over the company. And um, this company itself belongs to a much bigger umbrella group called the LNO Group standing for the two owners, Luca and Ortmeier. LNO? Yeah, right, LNO. Okay. And, you know, I guess you, a lot of guys know it's like the popular brands belonging to this umbrella groups like Zig Sauer Germany, it's like Zig Sauer Inc. It's like Laza, Mauser, Rigby, uh, Sauer and so on. So really a lot of brands. So you see, this is mainly driven by firearms and real shooters. Yeah, and, and you heard him say six hours, six hours. This isn't like brands, this is like big, big market share, right. money, brand. So, you know, I just, well, what of course, you know, when, when we as air gunners understand, you know, sometimes it's scary to spend a lot of money on an air gun because you're thinking, well, is that company going to be here tomorrow, next year? Yeah. You know, and you always want them to be here to support you. And I just wanted them to get an idea of what really a big thing you guys are a part of. Yeah, and exactly. how And how that energy or, or essence definitely influences your design. Yeah, that, that, that's true because, you know, um, the reason is that I think the air gun industry at itself gets more and more professional. I mean, could you imagine that people spend like $2,000 on an air gun like 10 years ago? Hell no! And I think a lot of firearm shooters now see that air gun could be serious shooting. And for them, I think it's a challenge. If you shoot all the time your 1911, you might see, well, this is an air gun. So starting with the PCP, said, wow, and cover 50 yards or 100 yards and yeah. still having a grouping of less than an inch. It's like we get a lot of firearm shooters interested into our industry. Yep. And you can see the development of the Diana product for sure. It's on the one time the, the entry class, like the Storm Rider, like the Airbus Trail Scout, where we come later to. But it becomes more and more professional and people spending more and more money for an action. They are. It's interesting, you know, the, the general public's perception, you say, you know, people ask me what I do for a living, and I say yeah. I'm in the air gun industry, and, they, and they're like, you mean like the BB guns at Walmart? Yeah. And I'm just like, well, yeah, you know, so that's the perception. And the other perception is that, you know, people start with air guns and then move to powder burners, when the reality is most of us air gunners, you know, grew up shooting center fire and rim fire rifles. Right. And then we've switched to air guns because, frankly, they're more interesting. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of people, true. they don't get that. But a couple of times, even when, when we are in US, or especially at hunting shows, we're like, oh, what's that? Well, that's an air gun. Oh, it's okay, so are you selling only toys? And it's like, well, it's not toys. It's like, exactly. seriously, it's 50, not... 60 joule or more. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, no. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, so there's that. But I, I definitely want to talk about the Airbug. Yeah. If that's cool. And the Trail Scout, you want to start with the Airbug? Yeah, we start with the Airbug. So um, actually, the, um, the system of, uh, of the Airbug is based on the CP2, which is, we did since more one and a half years, incredible sales, in, okay. even in USA, uh -huh. for the Chaser and also the Chaser rifle, the conversion kit, right. can be pistol and rifle at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah, this one, or this one. Um, we want to keep the action the same, because, you know, once it comes, people have two or three or four air guns, and 
for everybody easier. You have the same spare parts, you can use the same parts to tinker with. If you later on see all the rifles here, especially, you see that they always have the same core of the system, so a lot of opportunities for tinker. Mm -hmm. So actually this is a CP2, having the nice ergonomic wooden grip mm -hmm. and a different um, bevel, so we don't have a thread for a silencer, but a small bevel weight and a metal metal side. Also. Okay, I'm guessing this is a 177 product? Yeah, 177 and 22. And 22? Yeah, right. How many joules? Do you know? Well, it will be the same power level than we have for the chaser. So it will be 7.5 joule okay. and about nine, 8 to 9 now. Because you know, so four, four to six foot pounds, something yeah, like that. Right. But people can measure the specs from the chases, so this is actually the same system. Is it a hand feed or is it a shock tray or a magazine fit? Like how does well, it work? Well, here you see it's only single load, but okay. it will come later on uh, with multi shot magazine already included. So that's a big difference to the chaser also. Okay. We put a mag already inside here, so it's All quite right. good. Can you turn around so I can see the other side? Yeah, sure. Okay, so there's the cocking mechanism. It looks this way. All right. It's and the then same. The CO2 yeah. just goes right up, uh, right up in here. Right, exactly. And what do you know about the price point? Uh, it's a good question. We uh, think it could retail in US for about 89 to 99. So we don't have a final final price yet, but roughly this will be uh, around 100 bucks, give or take. Yeah, maybe a little bit less, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> That's a neat looking, slick, slick looking little gun. Cool. Okay, so then there's also also CO2. Is the trail scout? Yeah. Well, this is, you know, people see the trail scout and know, well, it looks like a storm rider. Why did you put the trail scout on it? Yes. Um, but this is a CO2 rifle, okay. having a lot of the same features that the storm rider has. Mm -hmm. The most important thing, which is this rifle and also like PCP, is the stock. Because this is, the trail scout comes with this polymer stock. So cool, so slender. Yeah, it's Just a nice texture, to... you know, Look not that shiny. That uh, nice shakering, if you feel it, it's really, yeah. really good. It feels like, um, like bed liner, yeah. like a soft bed liner. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, the clue to this one is that this is the first CO2 rifle that allows you to attach three capsules at the same time. Three. Yeah, so right. we have this magic part here inside. Uh -huh. So you're starting putting one capsule in with a hat, the other one reverse, then you uh -huh. put on this part, uh -huh. like this, and then the other one with a hat again, like the first one. Mm -hmm. Then you just um, tighten it up, and when you finish tightening, you just Put it up like this. Okay, so because we're trying to pierce three cartridges, yes, you put this little guy on here to increase the leverage. Yeah, and actually, once you put it up, this is attaching the whole system. Yeah, I got it. So if we got three CO2, that's a lot of shots in well, a rifle. Yeah, people often think that if you get more capsule, to get more power, but the fact yeah. is we have like a filling pressure of 70 to 80 bar for a CO2 capsule. Yeah. So even if you put 10, you will not get more power out yeah, of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so we have about 15 joules in 22 caliber um, and about 11 joules in 11 to 12 joules in 4.5. So five. 7 to 12 foot pounds, somewhere in there it sounds yeah. like. You, you have, have to you have to do the measurement. I mean, it's, I'm pretty it's sure your, it's, your, it's, your, it's your weird dimensions you are using. Which is, per, <laughs> which is perfect for like, you know, inside of 50 yards, you know, small game, testing. Yeah, actually, it, actually I think it's a nice way for, for pass control because people who want to have a storm rider, yeah. it's like, okay, I have to fill it up now. People just can three cartridges and get about really, you know, it's a cool down effect, but 90 to 100 really good shots on a good level. 90 to so 100. So this is really nice for thinking in the backyard. Yeah. And, and I like the open sights yeah. and a little 11 millimeter rail. Right. And when this will also be offered here in the States and with a magazine? Shot yeah, tray? It, 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 all, it already comes with a single load uh, tray, you know, from the Bandit, the Chaser, and also come with a multi shot magazine. People who already have the Storm Rider yeah. uh, can use their Max. So this is also very important for us to make sure we can use a lot of the same parts for customers because it's sometimes frustrating. You buy a gun and then you have to buy two or three additional magazines. Yeah. So we try to make it fit um, for the most of the guys. So if the Storm Rider is $200 price point, where, where, where do you think this will fall? Uh, we hopefully we could sell it for $149, uh, including um, the silence and the magazine. So the idea is to be less than the... Uh, yeah. So because the Storm Rider makes more power, it makes more, more power, range. Yeah, and you know, also a piece of piece a little bit more complicated. Sure, more so, expensive to manufacture. Yeah. And so that, that's the reason. Okay. Um, but the good news for everybody who likes Storm Rider, but would you go for a plastic stock, polymer stock, uh, is that we also will launch the Storm Rider with the same stock um, to be available in summer, so people can have the choice: take a Storm Rider wooden version or go for the all-weather stock. Mm -hmm. Nice.
All right, so I know they're all thinking it. <laughs> you know what I'm going to ask you? No, I'll, please. I'll, I'll tell the story. So, Skyhawk, Skyhawk, Skyhawk. They've been after me. These guys are trying to get no. What the funny, what the funny thing is, this is the problem, guys. When all the Skyhawks that they send to all the laminated Skyhawks, because that's what I want to review. Yeah, I know. All the laminated Skyhawks that they send to the United States all get sold out before they even hit the dirt. <laughs> and yeah. then there's none left for the reviewer. And that's actually the reality of what happened. And yeah, I have to apologize for this, but it was like, <laughs> well, we don't have them in stock. So yeah, but we just ship, well, they're all gone. Yeah. So, um, we're working on it, you will get it with high pressure. We try to ship it now from Germany. Uh, so you can make the review because I'm also very excited about your opinion for the one of the sexiest bull but we have on the market. So it, is, it is dead sexy and, and to be transparent with you guys, um, I'm holding out for the laminate version because that's going to be um, part of the review discuss win at Airgun Nation where yes, we, right. we, we review the product, send you all over to Airgun Nation so that you can partake in a good discussion and enter, uh, enter the giveaway so that one of y'all can win that, and that's the one that I thought was, the wallet's beautiful, but I thought that looked the coolest, so I'm holding out for that, so hopefully you guys can be patient with me, and I'm sure to this you understand as well. Sure. Cool. Yeah. What do we forget? Well, nothing. I want to say thank you to all the, all the guys, all the viewers, not even in the US, but all in all the other countries, looking the video, give some comments, some feedback. We really appreciate it. I kind of read all the comments, but I try to get some of them in between the lines and see what we can improve to make the product even better for you because this is a mission we have. Make it good for the guys out there we're shooting. Appreciate that. Together we are strong. I read yeah, all your comments right. and I do relay the feedback to Tobias. So um, keep them coming, guys. We appreciate you. And Tobias, yeah. I appreciate you, sir. Thanks good so much. It's always good. Yeah. Take care.